Now, the Lagos State Ministry of Education has warned private schools in the state not to open for third-term academic activities. This warning is in reference to the plan by some private schools in the state to resume academic activities for the third term of 2019-2020 session via online teaching from Monday, April the 27th, 2020. The Ministry of Education, in a statement signed by the Commissioner for Education, Falashade Adefisayo, said schools in the state remain closed until further notice. Adefisayo acknowledged that the financial burdens of online education on parents and schools during this period and called for continuous dialogue between school administrators and parents. Earlier on, we spoke with Professor Abia Woshika and she reacted to this. At first, I, I couldn't uh, quite understand what we were supposed to be doing online uh, if we weren't doing third term uh, content. But then I, I realized that uh, reading through the article again, uh, she was very fair. She saw the side of the school, she saw the side of the parents, but uh, I'm sure the parents' side uh, won over in that decision, which is uh, we're not working, we don't have money, uh, it's, it's uh, consuming data. And so I think the easiest way for her to say this is why don't you talk to your parents and the stakeholders, and if they if, if they can uh, go with you or, or let you continue, then go ahead. And if not, then, you know, school has not started yet anyway. So I, I think it, it, it looks like both sides uh, fairly, if you read the article. Well, Professor, you would agree with me that there are people uh, who have no access to internet and data, how would this group be taken care of during this time? Well, uh, there's uh, radio, there's TV, uh, and radio is increasing in the sense that the federal government is, is now expanding the broadcasts to include uh, all of the 36 uh, stations in the 36 states. So, we will just have to, because radio is there, is pervasive. So it can be, it can be on the phones, it can, it can be a little radio with the battery. So it's more available for the children to use. Uh, and if the learning proceeds, uh, what curriculum will they be using? And how do you explain this? Because it's not clear at this point. Yeah, well, uh, the curriculum, uh, well, for me, uh, especially as a school owner, uh, uh, it's, it's an agreement with you and the parents. Mm -hmm. Whatever the parents say we're going to, to do, that is what we're going to do. We're going to do online, and whether we're doing uh, third-term curriculum or not, we're just not going to call it third-term curriculum because the state's state is not yet in the third term and that is what we're just going to say All right, lastly, we can't we can't label it anything else All right, lastly professor because you have to understand the perspective you know i mean we're, we're a litigious society now it used to be uh, god will do it is what parents would say but now if parents go to court and they sue sue us or sue the state uh, it's not going to be funny. Mm -hmm. So I can understand her being uh, in, in the middle of the road right there. All right. What's the future of education, in your opinion, post-COVID? Will e-learning become a constant, you think? I, I hope it will. Because, uh, you know, I, I've been campaigning for it to be. And so, so I'm hoping that we will not just go back to the way we were uh, and letting... Uh, uh, just th this pandemic, you know, uh, end without us doing what the whole world has been doing before. I mean, the, 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 it's, it's, it's global. The, the, the rest of the world is doing e-learning. Even those of us here in Nigeria have benefited from online courses that are given uh, 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 free of charge. And so we see the benefit. 
But the government has to now insist and, you know, have the willpower to make us, you know, really do e-learning and do it right. Because what we're doing right now is just uh, coping. E-learning should be done properly. Then it will work. Still on the matter, Plus TV Africa spoke with the Commissioner for Education, Adefisai of Fulashadi. The federal government has not reopened schools. So I'm just uh, stating a matter of fact. Right. If, if they don't, uh, what is going to be the future of education as it stands, even as we it face COVID-19? Look, we have to start thinking out of these minor silos, first term, uh, second term, third term. Continue teaching the children. They didn't do exams in second term, mm -hmm. because most of them didn't. So why don't you just continue with it? They've been doing it. So I'm not uh, saying they should not teach children. You see, many parents were very angry over this third term because they thought it was a ploy to get school fees. So I just said, look, leave it up. You've been teaching the children. Continue. Continue assessing learning and so on. But I think but that we have opened. The federal government closed us and has not opened us. So we can continue the teaching and learning. But the question yeah, is... Like we've all been doing. So it's okay. Yes, Commissioner. The question is, if you say they should continue the teaching and learning, what curriculum is that? So is that going to be third term or is a prolonged second term? It's not a prolonged second term. Do, do you have to break school like that? If you go to other countries, or that if you are doing reproduction, when you finish it then you start excretion, so you just continue. So are we Don't continue teaching the whole one year syllabus to the end of the session? We don't know when the session will end. Mm -hmm. But we will open schools as soon as possible. But we don't know when. All right, Commissioner, but another issue that this would raise for everyone who is listening and watching is the fact that, yes, there are those who do not have access to Internet and do not have data. What will happen to such people? Uh, are they going to be excluded or there will be some special provision for them? Well, for our public schools, we have been teaching on radio and television. A lot of what we are doing is revision work. Like most schools, we too are also going to start continuing learning and teaching, you know, just following the syllabus to the end of the year. So we have our radio, we have our television. By the time we factor that in, most people have had that will have access. As for those who don't even have access at all, we've started thinking of all sorts of alternatives, learning packets sending it home to them, and so on. So, But it's a very challenging thing, but we are working on ensuring that every child at least has access to something. I mean, one of the things that COVID-19 has done is the fact that uh, it's forcing a lot of in new innovation and creativity. Now, in terms of education, we are forced now to begin to look at e-learning. What's the future of education, in your opinion? Will e-learning become a constant factor in our education system? What of, can you... Repeat the question. Please. All right. I said one of the things that COVID-19 has done is to force out creativity and innovation, new ways of doing things. In your opinion, what will be the future of education post-COVID-19? Shall we resort to e-learning or will it become a constant in our education system? I think it will be a blend. I don't think you can, at this point in time, totally rule out the teacher-student uh, interface. So I think it will be a blend, which is what was happening in some schools before this uh, happened.